it. So shall we start? Okay. So this talk will be only loosely related to my SQL. And I do a lot of benchmarking and I often ask the question, how do I make the graphs? So this talk will be about how, do, uh, how to make that graph in 17 easy steps. So that's, uh, that's an output of Sysbench comparing uh, multiple storage devices, both in the read-only and read-write cases. And why visualization is important? I have uh, some examples here. And um, the, okay, the terminal is smaller. So the raw data of this, uh, looks like that. So it's a lot of sysbench outputs. We can look at one. So it has the seconds granularity data. So it consisted of 60 time series data. So if, you, if I would like to graph that, it's 60 graph. 60 graph is, you know, too much to show in a 15 minutes talk. So we have to do something, you know, which can visu visualize this better. And we will use R and uh, ggplot2 for that. So in order to uh, use the stuff I, I, I'm gonna use here, we have to pre-process the data to put that into our data frames. For that, the data needs to be in this format. The first column is second. You can see from the R code that, uh, from the column names, what does it actually mean? So. This means that for the first second of the benchmark on this storage device, or it was a read-only test with this many threads, the metric is sysbench transactions per second and the value is uh, more than 2,000, right? So, the, so here, or in a more realistic scenario, you have lots of data for each second. You will have MP stat data parsed for each second. You will have VM stat data. You will have probably all the MySQL admin variables. So you can choose uh, from, from the R code, you can choose what is interesting. But for the sake of this example, I, uh, I created a parser for this. So it's like, I, ha you, I usually have a script which takes the raw benchmark, which I run in the raw benchmark output directory and it just, you know, parses the data and outputs it like that and redirect it to, to a file. And that file, um, I read from R and, um, and do the graphs from that. So how to read the file from R? We are creating the data frame with the read.table which we read a table from a file. This is the file which is the output of the given script. So it's one line per second per metric. We name the columns and for each graph we do a subset. For example here in the sysbench TPS data frame we are subsetting the sysbench OLTP, uh, OLTP data frame the metric will be TPS, threads will be 256, the read write case this storage device, uh, we convert the value to numbers. Uh, in these examples, if you download this, this isn't necessary, but as soon as you have MySQL admin output there, for example, which has some no, non-number uh, non -number metrics, what you will see is as soon as you make the graph, each metric will appear in, in, the, in the Y axis as a text, uh, as text, and you will see a gray smudge or something like that near the y-axis with, with a graph that doesn't make sense. This function here, the, uh, it only creates some aggregates. I usually like to do that. So this is, also R has a nice IDE called RStudio. This is the first graph I'm going to show you soon, but here is the, here is the aggregate data frame. It's not too visible, I guess, but it calculates for the given benchmark. F each of these benchmark are, uh, benchmarks are an hour long. It calculates the standard deviation of throughput, mean throughput, the 95th percentile, and the, and the maximum. So kind of for each case, we have kind of a, a tabular data as well. 
Okay, so initial graph, the R code for that is this. The R code will grow during the presentation. So we take just the 256 thread read write benchmark at first. And in order to create a graph with ggplot2, you have to create a graph object with the ggplot function, and you have to add at least aesthetics and at least a geometry. Here uh, at the aesthetics, I tell that the x-axis is the time, the y-axis is the value of the metric, which is the TPS now, and I plot it as lines. So you saw that example, you load it into, into our studio, and and it will look like this. You can change the geometry. For example, one I like is geom text, which will just output the, the values as text. Okay, I don't have a label. I will show geom text later, I guess. But we can change it to, uh, to geom jitter, which is a jitter plot. So. The issue with this plot, with the line plots, is that the individual values are always joined. So in this black area, we have absolutely no idea what is happening. And it's a quite high variance, right? For it, it, it matters if it's 6,000 or 6.5. So we can do jitter plots. But still with the jitter, with uh, plotting only the dots, we still have some dark black areas. So we can use the alpha channel feature of the jitter plot. So we are plotting transparent dots. So where the color, which in this case is black, is more vibrant, we have more samples in that area because the dots are plotted on each other. Where they are more light, we, we have only, uh, only one sample. Next thing is this seems to be inconsistent at the first time, but it's only inconsistent because the because R auto detected the axis. So you can uh, use the expand limits function to set the, the start of the y axis to zero, which you know will yield to this graph. And you can specify a geometry and a color where we specified that it will be the storage uh, column from the data frame. It doesn't matter what do you specify as color. If something is a different text or a different number, it will be assigned a different color, and that's it. And this automatically generates the legend. The legend is not that nice to be here, right? So we add to the, so these are always additions. So from here, the R code would be too much to show. So I only, sh uh, I only show the additions. So we can put the legend here like that. And I like this because um, it shows the flexibility. This legend is quite ugly because we are using alpha channel for the dots. We actually figured this out with Fred uh, at last for them. So, you know, the, the color in the legend is really light. So we can override the legend to have, uh, have the alpha channel of one. So we have the regular color dot here. We can add the label to the y-axis. We can add the label to the x-axis. This is, you know, fairly uh, common thing, we can use more vi vibrant colors like that. And in the legend, it was still a bit ugly because the background was gray, so we can set it to white, so it's, it, it will be quite seamless. So this is still a single, a single benchmark run. So this is one time series, this is one hour verse of sysbench. In the next example, what we change is the x-axis. Instead of putting the time there, we are extending the data frame. So we are not restricted to a single thread configuration, but uh, we are examining all the threads. And in the x-axis, we are putting factor threads, which will result in an output like, uh, like this. The first column here practically will be the single threaded, second is two threads, four threads, eight threads, et cetera, et cetera. So this kind of uh, graphing is, I think, a good way to see how something scales and where is the, where is the optimal degree of concurrency. Uh, if you specify the x-axis like that, there will actually be a hidden x-axis for each column, 
which is time. So it is still in a, you know, it's still ordered by time. Okay, the other feature I like in R is faceting, because with faceting you can make easy comparisons. Here, uh, in this example, I added um, all, all runs for this, uh, this storage device, and I f I'm faceting based on if the band, uh, based on the read-only, read-write column. So here I will have two graphs. First is the read-only, second is the read-write. And they, they will have matching scales. So it's uh, like automatically if you're using faceting. So it's pretty easy to compare them, right? Re Read-write value is uh, slightly lower, but that's because the read-write test in sysbench. So um, it's different because in the sysbench transaction, if you're doing read-only tests, there are some statements that are simply not run, which, are, which would write the database in the, in the read-write case. More faceting, so you can do multi-column faceting. Here on the, so the first argument of this is the vertical. Dot means that I'm, I don't facet vertically. And uh, this is the horizontal. Here we are faceting in a way that we are using the read-only, read-write and the storage device. So in the first row, we will have the read-only data. In the second row, we will have the read-write data. So for all the three storage devices, the read-only and the read-write uh, performance is comparable. And you know why, why this type of vis visualization is important, we could say that you know, it, could do, uh, it could do some transactions per second or it could have this amount of re response time. But uh, you know, benchmarks with a, with a single number uh, as a result are not telling you too much, right? It's important how consistent is that performance is. And from the jitter plot, you can see that, uh, you know, for example, in the here, in the read-write case, if you, that after 256 threads, it goes more inconsistent while, while uh, not, on, not only it will be slower, it will be more inconsistent as well. And here in the read-write uh, read case, we have some spikes up, actually. So that you see that it's not that vibrant and most of them are in the, most of the samples are in the lower region, but um, some of them are in, are in the upper region. Okay, so we have some stuff to set the graph title, which will appear here. And the only thing which is, uh, which remains ugly in this is the caption in the thread because we did, you know, so much faceting then uh, these numbers are kind of pressed together and now they are unreadable. We can fix that by, uh, setting, uh, by setting the properties of the x-axis. So we, we are writing them in, in a, with, with 45 degree. In order to save the plot, uh, you need to use the ggsafe function. So by default, while you are working with RStudio, uh, it has, so let's go to the, to the last example. And this graph will actually take some time to generate. So see, it started to generate it. Because it's so many dots. Because it has, you know, e for each, uh, row in the data frame, it has to plot a dot there. So it's, uh, it takes some time. And there it is. So if you like it, you know, during, uh, during the period while you are working with this, you see a, a output here. And you can save this with the, with the GG save uh, function at the, be uh, at the end of it, if you like the graph. Okay, all the, all the R code on one slide. So actually to generate that graph, the R code is this. It was just, you know, step by step. This uh, goes, to, uh, goes to my GitHub repo where all the examples are there and all the sample data as well. The sample data is from a recent benchmark and the customer was kind enough that, you know, I, 
I could use it in, in this talk. And that's it. Thanks. Are there questions? The notion of factor. So factor just means discrete values. So let's try to remove uh, factor here and just graph the threads. And uh, the issue what we will see here is that it will be linear, right? So this is one, two, three, four, da, 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 1,000. So the, the factor means that I'm supplying discrete values to you, and each discrete value should have its own, uh, you know, an equal area on the graph. That, that's what factor does. So without factor, it looks like this. Hmm? Yeah, faceting is multiple graphs next to each other with, with, uh, with the scales matching. <laughs>